What's up, Tampa Bay Buccaneer fans? This is former Buccaneers defensive tackle James Canada, and this is Game's Future Perspective. Hey, before we get started, I would just like to send my heartfelt condolences out to Shaq Barrett and his family right now. Can't imagine what they're going through, but that's just a tra tragic situation, and I just want to offer my condolences. Um, the NFL draft just took place, and looking at this draft on paper, I got to say, I give the Buccaneers an early grade of a B plus. Now, I don't normally like saying what grade I give a team because no matter what you do, who you pick, who you think is right, if you think it's wrong, you really don't know until the season comes along and how they pan out. And sometimes it may be a two-year stretch before you really know what's going on. But I just want to say welcome the crew to Tampa Bay. I'm going to go through this list of players that we selected in this year's draft, talk about them a little bit, and then ask you guys, let me know in the comments below what you think. Give me your grade and do what we do. Come in, have fun, and cheer on our Buccaneers. So first and foremost, Kalijah Cansey. You know, I did a couple mock drafts. I did a couple different shows. And I said that Cansey was my sleeper pick. So for me to say that I was beyond happy when the Buccaneers got him with the 19th pick in the draft, I was ecstatic. Um... I believe he's very similar to the playing styles of Warren Sapp and Aaron Donald. Now, that's a lot. I know that. We haven't seen him play yet. But his explosiveness, his burst off the ball, what he can do with his hands, getting in the gaps, penetrating, making plays in the backfield in college, he was amazing. You know, in two years of football, he had 14 and a half sacks. Uh, he gets after it very well. And I just believe that we're really going to be happy with his play. Inside, he's more of a two-way defensive player. You can put him in the four-eye, you can put him in a five, even if you want to put him in a one. Just don't put him in the zero technique or in the two technique head up over anyone because he needs to use his speed and mobility to have success. But Kalaja Kansi, coming out of the University of Pittsburgh, is a monster, and I think that this is a good pick. The second pick, offensive lineman, Cody Mock. This pick has a lot of people ecstatic, and I will say this. When he busted onto the scene at the Senior Bowl out of North Dakota State, I was like, man, who is this kid with no teeth? But he is like a Swiss Army knife. He played all five positions at the Senior Bowl, right tackle, left tackle, center, and both guards. When it came to practice, he did what he needed to do to impress scouts. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I was very happy with what he did, but I honestly did not believe that he would be there in that second round when it was our turn to pick. But lo and behold, Cody Mock was there, and I believe that this is a great pick. Am I the only one that feels like him and Ryan Jensen may be related? No, I'm just playing. I think what you get is a tough-nosed kid who's versatile. He may be a little light to play the tackle position. More than likely, he's going to move inside to guard. But to just be able to do all the positions at a high level, I mean, Guys, this guy was the FCS Offensive Lineman um, of the Year in North Dakota State. He came in I think, as a tight end, got moved to offensive line. He, like I said, he's versatile and do a lot of great things. I believe that this is a good pickup. Now, third round, Yaya Diaby out of Louisville. Man, this kid is long and rangy, like six three and a half, six four. They said great strength. And he has nothing but upside as a pass rusher. We need to add depth on the outside at uh, the pass rush position. You know, we talked about Shaq Barrett being hurt last year. And now this gives you a piece on the edge to come in and be able to help uh, make plays and put into a rotation where he can get things done. At Louisville, guys, last year, well, in 2022 season, uh, nine sacks. I mean, he, he can get after the passer. He will make good things happen. And I don't think that you can go wrong uh, at this pick when you get him and you see what, you know, he can do. But we're going to see what happens here. But I believe that this is a very great pick, and I think everybody's going to be happy by it. Now, this next pick, fifth round pick, 153 Overall, I just like saying this kid's name, Servassier Dennis. Yes, yeah, Servassier Dennis, an inside linebacker from the University of Pittsburgh. He played with Kalijah Kansi. He is 
good from the aspect that he can learn to be an inside linebacker. He's played primarily Mike, but he can learn how to play other variations of the inside linebacker position, and he can help contribute on special teams because at the end of the day, you know, this isn't college where you have a bunch of walk ons that play special teams. These guys you draft will have to play special teams. Um, he has quick, with pro, you know, processing skills, so he sees plays and reacts to them fast. He's a great tackler on the inside. He is urgent and getting to the ball, and his experience on special teams, again, like I said, is is big. It gives the Buccaneers a, a much needed piece. Um, you know, we're in a position where one of our inside linebackers isn't happy. We don't know what's going to happen after this year. So, Servasier Dennis was a good pick at uh, at this spot. Next, this is a pick that I know a lot of people are going crazy over right now, and that is Payne Durham, the tight end out of Purdue. I mean, Payne Durham is a big boy, and to get in the red zone, he is going to be a red zone threat. He can also block very well, very competitive, and very tough. And one thing we were missing without Rob Gronkowski last year is the big physical red zone presence out of our tight ends. Um, Cade Odden is a good tight end, a good receiving tight end, but this is a bigger, tougher body. And for him to have a third-round grade and fall and be available in the fifth round, I think he's a little bit sleeper. You know, he's 253 pounds. He can block. And he had 56 receptions uh, this past year. That is Amazing, man. I mean, 56 receptions. He will get it. He'll pull it in. Soft hands. And like I said, you have to like a guy that's willing to block and able to block. So I know Payne Durham, tightening out of Purdue, is a great pick. Um, Josh Hayes, defensive back out of K-State in the sixth round, the pick 181 overall. You know, this pass is 71 tackles, seven pass defenses, five and a half tackles for loss. Um He'll get all over it. He'll help add a little bit of depth. But primarily to me, I think this is more of a special teams uh, pick. You get him in the right situation. And for him to make the team, it's primarily going to have to be on uh, special teams. And another six-round pick, we had 191 overall. This is a guy that's gotten a lot of praise from a lot of different people. And that is Trey Palmer out of Nebraska. He is a speed guy. They said he is a vertical threat and he has game changing speed. That's something that we need to compliment Mike Evans and uh, Godwin. But, you know, he's young. No hurry for him to come in, be in a six round pick, come in, learn the game, and he was able to get out there on the field, know that he has a speed. Also, may you utilize him as a punt returner, kickoff returner. Um, you know, special teams resume is well established. He has upside because of that speed. Um, maybe he needs to learn the right route tree just a little bit more. But you can't teach speed. So having speed is always a great thing. And I believe that this is a good fit. A six-round pick that will probably have an impact on the team his rookie year via special teams and being able to build up to that third or fourth receiver in year two. Um, last but not least... It says outside linebacker, but this guy's truly an edge. Jose Ramirez out of Eastern Michigan. 12 and a half sacks, 19 and a half tackles for loss in one season. Now I know, Eastern Michigan in the MAC, not the biggest conference in the world, not a Power 5 conference, but solid football conference. They have people that compete all the time. And the one thing I saw from this guy when I saw film was he was able to get after it he uh, has a great first step burst. Uh, he likes to win the vertical rush game. Like He'll start up field, get the offensive lineman to set to it, and then counter off of it. He has a slippery frame um, with his pads and can finesse rush a lot. So that's what I'm saying. He'll get you going one direction, come back a second direction, make you miss, and it's amazing to watch him play. Um, I think he can only go up. You know, he's another edge guy. He's long. He's rangy. He can get after it. Um, now we know late six round pick. Sometimes some people say a six round pick doesn't have a chance to make a team. You know, I was a six round pick that stuck around for five years. So you never know what's going to happen and how they get in and play and mesh and gel with this team. But overall, you know, looking at this draft class, Kalaja Kansi, Cody Mock, uh, Yaya Diaby, Servasier Dennis, Payne Durham, 
Josh Hayes, Trey Palmer, Jose Ramirez. Hey, guys, nothing but the best of luck. I pray that you come out, do your best, have great camps. I pray that all you guys make the team because I know what it's like to feel like the underdog going in as a late-round pick. But needless to say, Buccaneer fans, how do you grade this year's draft? A, B, C, or was it a fail? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Again, this is James Canada, former Buccaneers defensive tackle, and this is Game's Peter Perspective. Mm -hmm.